Hey, this is Shermin on Radio Heatwave and you're tuning in to Get Local, where I get up close and personal with our local talents. Be authors, musicians or film directors, <coughs> learn how these people overcome the constraints of a little island with their passion. Today, I have with me Rinko, a regular contributor of Teens Magazine specializing in Asian entertainment and author of Pop Rock Love, to share with us her journey and thoughts as a local author. Could you tell us more about your book, Pop Rock Love? Hi. Um, okay, my book, Pop Rock Love, is about um, it's about this rocker chick who's from Singapore, and then she, I mean, her, okay, her boyfriend right runs away, and she goes and find him, only to find out that he's actually part of a boy band in Japan. So where do you get mm-hmm. this inspiration for the story? Um, actually, um, there was a time when I was very into J-pop and J-rock as well, so. That was where the inspiration came from. So from yeah. like your experiences? Okay. Um, not only from my experiences, but it's more like um, because there was one point in my life where I was very into J rock, Japanese rock music, and then suddenly, you know, there was suddenly I started liking Japanese pop music. So this like this merger of the two genres sort of uh, sparked off the inspiration for pop rock love. Okay. So there's this character Mimi, right? Mm-hmm. It's, um, let's say she's a, just an ordinary Singapore girl, but yeah. she doesn't know that she fall in love with this rock star guy. Do you have any similarities with Mimi? Me, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we are both quite impulsive. Uh, she's also a very impulsive person. Like she will do anything for love. I won't really do anything for love, but I'm more maybe for my dream. I will be quite impulsive sometimes, and um, yeah, I just go out for it. So how long do you take to write this book? The inspiration for this book came like quite some time before I actually started writing the book. So the whole process did take a few years, maybe like about maybe two years actually, because you had to do a lot of redrafting, that means you have to write again, edit it and re- write it again. Yeah. But how do you get your book published? Was it self-publishing or does someone approach you? Um, okay, for my book, right, it's actually self-published, um, but I did get a grant from the National Arts Council, so they um, it helped with the printing cost, so um, yeah, it's supported by the National Arts Council. So uh, do you have any first book prior to this story? Uh, before this, I did write uh, something like a parable. Yeah. It's called Munchie Isn't Everything. So that one was uh, it was written before this one. So were there any f- challenges faced along the way? Challenges. Um, I guess for all writers, the challenge is really about. Uh, I mean, maybe for every artist in Singapore, the I mean, it's not so. Maybe people are not as supportive of Singapore writers or Singapore artists. Yeah, whether it be singing or art. So that is the main challenge and also I think for the book industry, uh, Singaporeans are writing, I mean they don't read as much nowadays also, so that is also another challenge as well. It's more about the industry I would say, than other things at the moment, yeah. So how do you overcome these challenges? Like you know mm. people try to discriminate, I'm not say discriminate yeah. but look down on local authors, how do you prove to them that well, local authors are also worth reading and like, um, I guess this is a, it's going to be a long, you know, it's going to be a long journey if you're talking about really how to overcome this uh, local discrimination thing. Um, I mean, one, one of the things I'm trying to do right now is to encourage reading. I mean, not even talking about reading about local authors, I mean, just reading in general. Um, and I think as long as your product is good and there's a good word of mouth, good publicity, I think it, it doesn't really matter whether you're local or not. But um, eventually, Singaporeans will also start reading it, reading you as well. But do you think you can earn money as an author in Singapore? Uh, to be honest, I mean, when I first started out, I did think that I will be rich and famous and like earn a lot of money, you know. But uh, as I as I you know get further down this journey, you realize that that is not really the the main motive that you should have when you are wanting to be a writer. Um, at the moment, can you earn money? I mean, you can't really. There are not many people that do they do survive as an author. I mean, they, they don't write full-time and they are just, yeah, they're just writing full-time. Um, maybe in the future when there's a more established, uh, yeah, established reading scene, writing scene, it could happen in the future. Hmm. So what, uh, how can you make yourself stand out from other local authors? I mean, we have some famous authors mm. like Russell Lee, except for yeah. <laughs> I know, do you think they're up to the standard? Will you ever be to that standard? Um, um, I think the way, th- I mean, they are, I mean, everybody has different genres. Um, my genre is quite different from Russell Lee or even Catherine Lim or 
Colin Cheong, other local writers as well. Um, how you distinguish yourself is really, I mean, to for all writers, you should write your own story, uh, something that only you can write. And it, it's not about being better than the other person or anything like that. It's really about writing a story that only you can write. Yeah. Okay. So if you've just tuned in, you've been listening to Get Local on Radio Heatwave with me, Charmaine, and my guest, local author, Rain. Now, Rain and I have been discussing about her journey as a writer and her first book, Pop Rock Love. Mm-hmm. But it seems like Singapore, although Singapore is a small market, one can still, one can still find success if you can write only something that you, if you can discover something that only you can write and no others can. So, well, I have some good news for those curious about the storyline of Pop Rock Love as you can still get your own copy of Pop Rock Love at Kinokuniya or from selectbooks.com. In the meantime, the phone lines are open so if you have a question for Rain, call it at 6460-8452. That's 6460-8452. Welcome <coughs> back on the Get Local on Radio Heat with me, Charmaine, and it's a pleasure to have Rain here with me today. Now it's time to take in your questions, so drop me a call at 6460-8452. Once again, it's 6460-8452. Well, it looks like we have a call on the line. However, because of some technical issues, we are unfortunately ab- unable to get the guests online. However, we have the question right here with me, and so our question for Rainy is, when do you plan to write your second book? Oh, um, for me, uh, right now I'm working on a trilogy, so it's going to take quite some time to finish writing. Uh, I hope to get the first, uh, the first, actually by the end of this year, actually, the first book by the end of this year. Mm, yeah. So besides these books, besides writing novels, mm-hmm. books, do you have any other works? I know you're a regular contributor to Teens Magazine as well. Um, yes, um, I also write um, entertainment I mean entertainment um, news for Teens Magazine and um, also I mean I'm actually trying to also promote writing like what I said before so I'm trying to have like workshops, um, schools in schools as well talking about creative writing yeah. So when did you discover your flair for writing? Um, I guess when I was in secondary school actually because I was from an uh, all-girls school and they really encourage a lot of literature, encourage a lot of writing as well and I think that was when, I mean of course when teachers tell you that you're good at a certain subject that is when you realise that oh okay, you're actually quite good at English yeah. So from the time you started in secondary school to the, today mm-hmm. you have published some books what do you think has changed over the years? Has your writing gotten better? Oh yeah, I hope so <laughs> yeah, I mean I can't really say myself whether it gotten better or not but I think, um, I mean like when it comes to art you, you are always constantly polishing your art uh, you're always constantly doing better as well so I think uh, yeah it has become more mature over the years compared to last time so what's your biggest achievement so far as a writer? Uh, biggest achievement um, I think for every writer whenever your book is out in the bookshelves or when it's uh, when it gets a good review from a reader as well that is when you really feel uh, very accomplished I guess for writers, it's all about writing, and as long as somebody's reading your works, that's when it's uh, it's worthwhile. 